In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today is the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. Today is also the Feast of St. Anne. She's the uh, mother of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And it was in her uh, uh, sacred womb uh, that the Immaculate Conception took place. So she has a lot of influence uh, as uh, mother of Holy Mary and as uh, grandmother of uh, Jesus. We have to go to St. Anne's often and be confident that she can uh, get to what we ask from her. So we can also ask her to pray for us. We uh, pray for the people from Quebec today. St. Anne is the patroness of, uh, of Quebec. And the epistle for today is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you shall die. But if by the Spirit you mortify the deeds of the flesh, you shall live. For whosoever are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again in fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption of sons, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. For the Spirit himself give a testimony to our spirit that we are the sons of God, and his sons heirs also, heirs indeed of God, and joint heirs with Christ. And please stand for the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. At that time, Jesus spoke to his disciples this parable. There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said to him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship. For now thou canst be steward no longer. And the steward said within himself, What shall I do, because the Lord taketh away from me the stewardship? To dig, I am not able. To beg, I am ashamed. I know what I will do, that when I shall be removed from the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. Therefore, calling together every one of his Lord's debtors, he said to the first, How much dost thou owe my Lord? But he said, A hundred barrels of oil. And he said to him, Take thy bill, and sit down quickly, and write fifty. Then he said to another, And how much dost thou owe? Who said, A hundred quarters of wheat. He said to him, Take thy bill, and write eighty. And the Lord commanded the unjust steward, for as much as he had done wisely, for the children of this world are wiser in their generation than the children of light. And I say unto you, make unto, make unto you friends of the mammon of iniquity, that when you shall fail, they may receive you into everlasting dwellings. St. Basil the Great reminds us that we are stewards. We're just stewards of the goods of God. Everything in the world, God made everything. Everything belongs to Him. And we are its stewards for a time, for a short time of this life. And if we uh, practice a good stewardship, well, then we will merit eternal life. But if we squander the goods of our Lord, well, then we will uh, merit everlasting punishment. So we have to be good stewards, and the temptation is to think that we're not the stewards, but that we're the masters, that we're the owners, that this, that this world belongs to us, and that what we have are our possessions. Instead of just saying, no, my possessions do not belong to me, but I am merely the steward of them, and I have to use them uh, for the glory of God. And that will tell us then that, that the goods have to be used for the good of the whole church, and we see uh, many saints, uh, and he gives the example of the rich man. The rich man came to our Lord, young man, who was only young, and he said, what must I do to obtain the kingdom of heaven? And uh, the Lord said to him, uh, keep the commandments. And he said, I've kept the commandments since I was a little boy. I've always kept the commandments. And our Lord looked on him, and he loved him, and he said, there's one thing wanting to you, one commandment, you haven't kept. And he says, if you want to be perfect, sell what you have, give it to the poor, and come and follow me. And the man went away sad, because he had many possessions, many things. 
and he didn't want to give them away, he didn't want to part with them, he wanted to keep them for himself. So the one commandment he wasn't keeping was uh, to use your goods for others. Instead, he was committing the sin of avarice. Avarice, uh, wanting to uh, keep everything uh, for himself. So he was lacking in, uh, in the, what would be required for perfection and for holiness. This man was a just man. You could say he was a just man, but St. Basil and the others say, well, because of his avarice, he went down into hell and he did not save his soul. And even though he, he did this because he wanted to claim the possessions uh, that he had as his own and not as uh, being uh, belonging to uh, God. And here our Lord himself was the one that told him to sell it and give it to the poor. So if our Lord comes and tells you to sell your goods and give it to the poor, well, that's something we have to do. Now, for some of us, he doesn't tell us that. This is what many of the saints did. This is what St. Francis did, St. Clair did. Saint, uh, many of the great uh, uh, saints did. We read in their lives that they did do this. And they said, These are, this is where I make my treasure in heaven. And that's what he told this young man. You will have treasure in heaven if you uh, give your treasure for this. And he didn't want to have uh, the treasure in heaven. He wanted to have the treasure now in this world. So we do have to always remember that uh, our our goods do not necessarily belong to us. They don't belong to us. In fact, they belong to God. There's a saying in Ireland, a post, uh, it's a post famine saying, I believe, uh, but if there's food and there's somebody hungry, the food belongs to that person. It belongs to the hungry man. And that's who it belongs to him. It doesn't belong to you. It's on your table. It's in your refrigerator. But if there's somebody hungry, the food belongs to him. And that's uh, the case with all of our goods. So that's what the saints want to say with all of our goods. If you have a, a jacket in your wardrobe and somebody's cold, well, the jacket belongs to him. And you should give him the, the jacket. And this is how, how to be a good steward of uh, the goods of God. And that's uh, what we also want to try to do. This uh, gospel is a bit mysterious. St. Gregorius tells us also that this steward is the devil the devil, and he, he, he wants to deceive us, of course, because that's uh, what he normally what does want to do. So he finds out he's going to lose, he's going to lose control over us. Uh, the devil has, the steward has control over the other members of the place, too, and over the debtors. And so he calls our Lord's debtors. We're debtors to our Lord, we're not debtors to him. We're debtors to our Lord, and we're all debtors to our Lord. We owe debt because of our sins. Because of our sins, we have to do debts of penance, we have to do debts of prayer, and we have to uh, pay back and make reparation for all of our sins. And so we are debtors uh, to our Lord. We're debtors to Him for our life. We're debtors to Him for all the good He's given us. And so we owe, we owe the Lord. We don't owe the steward. And uh, the steward comes and says to the debtor, sit down quickly. You owe 100, sit down and write 50. I'll absolve you of 50% of your debt. Or I'll absolve you of 20% of your debt. Or I'll absolve you of a percentage of your debt. And say, you don't have to pay it. And this is what uh, we could say the council fathers did at the council. They changed the, the rules. They, they, they changed everything. And they, they were like this devil. This devil, they said, Sit down, don't worry, you don't have to keep the Sunday holy. If you don't go to Mass on Sunday, you don't have an obligation to go. You don't owe that to our Lord to go to Mass on Sunday. You know, if you don't go, well, that's all right. You can go maybe on Saturday night. That's how they started out at first, go on Saturday instead of going on a Sunday. And then they said, well, you know, we don't really have to go at all. And that's, the, that's the state we're in today, where most Catholics don't think they have to go to Mass on Sunday. And that's the, how they've been misled by the bishops and by the council. The council brought this up and gave it this possibility. And the council was the one that said, you have your own great dignity, your own great dignity, and you, you, you can make your own decisions. You can make your own decisions because of your dignity. And so you are free to decide uh, uh, if you're going to serve God or not, or how you're going to serve God, or if you're going to serve him or not, if you're going to serve some false God. That's all right, too. And uh, you have that great dignity that God has given you, and you become aware of your dignity, and so you don't have to have this debt to God of owing Him service, and praise, reverence, and service uh, to God. Well, that's, uh, that's good, but uh, it's not a debt. You don't owe Him. Take away that debt. 
And how eager these debtors were to sit down and do that. The, 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 the steward said, sit down and take 100 and write by 50. And the man was very quick to do that. He was very keen to do that and get out of his debt. And that's how many of the Catholics were when the council said, we don't have these debts to God. We don't owe him this honor. We don't owe him this worship. We don't have to keep this morality. We don't have to keep these commandments. These commandments are optional. That's what they said about many of the Catholic commandments. And that's what Pope Francis says about the commandments. He doesn't say it's correctly or optional, but he says, well, if you don't keep them, that's all right. Uh, that's your choice because of your great dignity. Your great dignity, you can choose which commandments you're going to keep and which ones you're not. Now, this rich man kept them all, except for the one about avarice. And, uh, and he was not satisfactory to God. And now these devils have deceived us, these devils in the form of council fathers and come in the form of bishops, have deceived us and said, no, you don't have to worry about this uh, morality, about this uh, service to God, about this uh, duties to God. You can uh, uh, choose what you're going to do. You are free because you have great dignity yourself. And uh, this great dignity of yours enables you to freely choose which way you're going to go, which way you're going to serve God, and what you're going to do. And that's what the council said. Exactly what the council said. And, um, and because of that, then, many men don't serve God, and many souls go down into hell and perish. Because this is all lies. This is deceits of the devil. But the Catholics were eager to hear it. We were liberated from all these restrictions the church put on us, all these middle age uh, 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 superstition, all these things that said we have to do this and do that and be good to God. We're liberated from that. This is what the Masons told them. You're liberated from that now. This is what the bishops told them. You're liberated from that now. And uh, many Catholics said we're eager and think, think enthusiastic uh, for these new changes. And then they ended up, of course, not serving God at all, and not practicing the faith at all, and falling away from the faith. And so they still belong, then, to the service of the devil. The devil, by doing this, uh, just kept, uh, kept them under his finger. They were still willing to serve him because he was so good to them that he liberated them from all the duty they owe God. And he said, you don't have to do this to be God. And so you're free, and so serve me now. I'm happy to serve him. They'll take me. They'll, they'll take me into their homes. That's what the steward said. If I do this, they'll take me into their homes. They'll take care of me, and they'll they'll, they'll be good to me. Uh, if I get thrown out by the Lord, well, they'll they'll take me in. This is what I want. And this is what he did get. And so many people, many Catholics, are happy to take him in and say, well, thank you for freeing me of all this debt I had to the Lord. So I don't have this great debt to him now. I don't have the debt to be good, to honor him, to love him, to serve him. I'm free of that. And even to believe in him. I don't even have the debt to believe in him anymore. And uh, so people die for the sin of unbelief and for these other sins flowing from it. And then they go down to hell. So the great success of the devil. This is why the council must be completely renounced uh, and we must consider that uh, these council fathers were acting the part of the devil when they passed these uh, decrees and declarations and uh, the different uh, works that they did pass. That they were all there uh, under the service of the devil to lead souls astray. And souls are, are led astray uh, by this. So we have to reject this and we have to say no. My debts are to the Lord. My debts are to the Lord, and I'm going to pay the Lord. My goods belong to the Lord, and I'm going to use them for his service. Uh, I belong to the Lord, and I'm going to serve him myself. And I'm going to obey his law, and I'm going to fulfill it. And I'm going to try to build my treasure in heaven uh, by using my goods and using the things I have on the earth and using my time uh, for the honor and glory of God. Because our time is also one of our goods that we have to use for the, the pleasure and for the good of God. And we should ask uh, uh, Our Lady, who will set the example, that we not be deceived. We should ask St. Anne not to let us be deceived by the words of the devil, not to let us uh, follow what this council teaches, not to let us follow these false bishops, and not to be tempted to go back and say, yes, now maybe I'll follow you. Maybe you're not so bad now, and maybe I can uh, uh, go and follow you into uh, perdition, because maybe it won't be perdition. I'll have you in my home, and you'll be making me nice and happy, uh, and, uh, and uh, leading me astray. This 
Jesus' uh, a great coup of the devil to uh, take over and influence the bishops of the church uh, to use them as his uh, tools in deceiving the faithful. That's what he did. He used the bishops as his tools in deceiving the faithful as his instruments. And they willingly went along with it. And the, willing, the faithful, a great majority of them, were willingly, were willingly deceived. And that's the temptation still today, that we want to be deceived. This is the temptation that Bishop Fillet fell into, and unfortunately he's led the society into this temptation. But yes, we want to be deceived, we want to follow the way of the world, we want to follow the bishops, and we want to get rid of this debt we have to the Lord. We don't have to serve him so strictly, we don't have to uh, be so concerned about serving him all the time. We don't have to be concerned about offending him in little things. We don't have to be concerned about these things. We want to be uh, able to live uh, uh, under, the, under the guidance of the bad steward, under the guidance of the unjust steward. And by that means, we become unjust ourselves. It's a uh, pray that uh, we can avoid these deceptions and we can not be deceived and we understand that we have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Fear and trembling lest we fail and lose our soul. And we have to work out our salvation in the fear of the Lord. That we're afraid to offend the Lord because uh, that puts us in greater debt to Him and uh, it tempts Him on His mercy and we tempt Him when we offend Him. We tempt Him uh, to uh, be merciful to us and maybe uh, in our time for mercy is uh, given close. So we want Him to be merciful now we want to say, yes, Lord, I want to pay my debt to you. I want to praise, reverence, and serve you in this world. I want to keep all the commandments, and I want to keep them out of love of you. And I do want to uh, have fear to offend thee, and have that good grip of holy fear that says, yes, be careful about the little thing. Be careful to avoid uh, little offenses against God, as well as large offenses against God, and try to serve him all things. And the unjust steward tempts us and says, no, you don't have to do that. Don't worry about that. Uh, don't take that too seriously. Well, we have to say, no, be God, Satan. The one alone is God, and he is the one we have to serve, and he is the one we have to be faithful to.